Hi there, welcome to That Board Game Show. My name is James Wood, and today I'm going to show you a solo playthrough for Wingspan, a competitive bird collecting and engine building game for one to five players. You are bird enthusiasts, researchers, bird watchers, ornithologists, and collectors, seeking to discover and attract the best birds to your network of wildlife preserves. Each bird extends a chain of powerful combinations in one of your habitats. Each habitat focuses on a key aspect of the growth of your wildlife preserves. You will be gaining food tokens from these custom dice in this bird feeder dice tower. Laying eggs using these marbled egg miniatures in a variety of colors. And expanding your bird collection, drawing from hundreds of unique bird cards. The winner is the player with the most points accumulated from birds, bonus cards, end of round cards, eggs, cached food, and tucked cards. So there you have the intro for Wingspan. Today I'm going to show you the solo mode which is controlled by this set of cards over to the side here. In this game, it's called the Automa. The reason it's called the Automa is because Automa is short for automaton. And the first time this automated AI was developed was for a previous game from Stonemaier Games called Viticulture, which was set in Italy. Hence, automaton. It's an Italian phrase. So what I'm going to be doing today is showing you how the solo mode of Wingspan works, playing against the automaton over here. I'll explain how that works as I do it. And I'll also explain how the gameplay progresses and evolves as you go. The gameplay for the solo mode is a very good representation of how the multiplayer game works. Because each player in a multiplayer game still has their own private preserve, their own hand of cards, and their own set of eight action cubes. These action cubes will be used each turn over a series of rounds. There are four rounds in total in the game, and each round has a specific objective or goal which we are trying to achieve, as denoted by this round tracker here. In each round, the person who best achieves that goal will score the points for first place. The person who does second best will score for second place, and so on. After four rounds, we will tally up our final score and whoever has the most points wins. In the solo mode, I will be flipping over a card from this action deck after every turn I take, which will represent the actions of the automaton, basically simulating the actions another player at the table would be taking. So with that all said, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to dive into the solo game by picking up my hand of five cards as dealt to me at the beginning of the game. I'm also going to look at these two goal cards which I was dealt. And these are going to give me a focus for the remainder of the game. So let's look at what these do quickly. This one says, birds with a bird tuck power. Certain birds allow you to tuck other cards underneath them as you're playing. That will become apparent as we play. For each of those birds in your preserve, at the end of the game, you will get two points. This one over here will score for birds with at least one egg on them at the end of the game. Again, that will become apparent as I start playing. So I'm going to go with this one because I think it's a bit easier to keep track of and explain. This one I will simply discard off to the side there. So now knowing that this is my primary goal, I can choose these birds to start with. At the start of the game, I have to pay one food. You see, I've got five food over here of the five different food types. We have seeds, rodents, fish, fruit, and invertebrates. And you will see on the top of these cards that each bird wants a specific type of food. However, at the start of the game, we don't need to pay attention to those just yet. Right now, we're just choosing the cards we're going to be starting the game with. So to do so, I will pay one food for each bird I keep of these five. 
That's why you start with five food and five bird cards. Okay, so I'm going to quickly just look at these and decide which ones I want to keep. And I will keep these two, discarding these three, which we will discard over there. And now I must pay two food for the two birds I've chosen to keep. And I can see over here what those birds want to eat. So I'll make sure I don't discard those food symbols at this stage. So let's discard a seed and a fruit because those two are not needed right now. Now that was technically part of setup. So now these two birds go into my hand and we can now begin with the first round. Every round of wingspan is divided up into a series of turns. And each turn you're gonna take one of these little action cubes and you're going to place it on one of these action spaces in your preserve. So let's go over those quickly. One of the actions is to play a bird and pay its food cost. What that means is you would take a bird from your hand, you would play it into a preserve, and then you would pay the food cost printed on that bird. The other action we can do is we can gain food. You will gain a food matching one of the symbols in the dice here, at which point you would take that food out of the dice tower and gain the matching food token. The other option is to lay eggs. That's pretty straightforward. We simply take that action and you can lay eggs on your birds and you'll see each bird has a certain type of nest and a certain number of eggs that can be laid on them. And the final action on your board here is to draw cards. When you go there, you will draw cards either from this face-up display where you can choose which bird you want or if you don't want any of the birds there, you can also draw from the face down deck over here. So I think that should give a pretty good overview of how to play. I'm going to now dive in with turn number one. Oh, and one final thing before I start playing, these end of round goals are universal goals. So just like we've got these bonus cards dealt to us at the beginning of the game, which give us a specific goal to work towards, these here are goals that everyone is working towards. So for round one, this goal here means the person with the most eggs in that type of nest will get first place here and will score four points for round one. So this is something to look at as well. To see what goals are coming up over here can help you decide what birds you play and when. Right now, I've got these two birds in my hand and you will see I've got all the food I need to play either of them. This one needs an invertebrate, a fish and a rodent. And this one needs a fish, a rodent, and whenever you see this symbol, that's a wild. That can be any food type. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to play a bird card. So I'm gonna take my action cube and I'm gonna place that above the leftmost available column in my player bird space. I'm going to now take this bird and play it down into this water habitat. You see it's got this water symbol. That means it can only be played in this habitat down here. I will then pay the food cost. So that will be an invertebrate, a rodent, and a fish back to the supply. And that is the end of my turn. So as you can see, once you've read the cards, once you know what's going on, the turns can really tick over very quickly. So I will then, after finishing my turn, slide this action cube over to indicate that my turn is now done and play would pass to the next player. There is no next player today, so play passes to the automaton. So now what we do is we flip over the topmost card of the automa deck and we place it on this round card over here. And you'll see it's got round one pointing to this row. What this action means, we've got a handy little guide here that says, take all bird cards that match bonus card. Automa keeps highest point value card face up and discards any others. That's what that symbol means. So we've got these two reference cards here to help us remember what all these different action symbol means for the Automa. We will now look at the Automa's goal card, which is birds with colors in their names. So now we'll look at the three available birds over here. 
and we'll see any birds with colors in their names. And as it happens, we have a purple gallinule, I hope I'm saying that right, a yellow-breasted chat, and a white-breasted nuthatch. So all three of those have colors in their names. So we will now pick up all three of those, thus simulating other players taking those birds away. We look at which one has the highest point value. The automa will keep that face up in front of them and discard these other two. And now the automa has seven points, which we will tally up at the end of the game. Another thing that could have happened if none match, the Automa draws one card and keeps it face down. So if none of those cards had colors in their names, we would have drawn one random card from the deck over here and added that face down into the Automa's supply. That card is worth a fixed number of points at the end of the game, depending on the difficulty you're playing. An introductory difficulty is three points for every face down card. The normal game is four points for every face down card and the challenging game is five points for every face down card. So you can ramp up how good the automa is, basically, depending on how much of a challenge you want. Today, because I've played this a few times, I'm playing on the normal difficulty. So each of these cards that end up in front of the automa will be worth four points at the end of the game. Okay, so that was that. That was the automa's turn, nice and simple. Now, we have no birds face up, so we will replenish the supply over here. Pop three new birds in. Available for collection during the game. And play comes back to me. Now, naturally, I would like to play another bird, but I have no food. So how do I get food? Well, I pick up one of my action cubes, I place it over there, and I get food. And you will see there's a picture of a single die. So that means I can take one of these food tokens out of the bird feeder. So I will look at my bird that I have in my hand. I will also take into account the birds out here in case I wanted to draw any of those. And I'll see what food they require to be able to start working towards them at a later date. So I can see that this common yellow throat would probably be quite a good one because it's very easy to get played. It only needs one food and it has a bowl nest, which you may remember is the goal for round one. I want to have lots of birds with bowl nests in my preserve by the end of this round. Thinking about maybe getting that, I will take this invertebrate out of the bird feeder, take that dice, remove it from the bird feeder, and now take an invertebrate token from the general supply and place it in front of me. Slide my action cube over to indicate that my turn is now done and the automa goes again. So we flip over a card and once again, the automa will look at the birds available and take any with colors in their names. So there goes my chance and my hope of getting a common yellow throat that just flew away into the automa's preserve. So we pick up the common yellow throat. Neither of these have colors in their names. So the automa will get that. And the automa now has eight points towards the end of the game. So now let us replenish the supply out there. Whenever we see one of these cubes, it means we take a cube from the automa's action cube supply and we place that on the round tracker for the current round. That represents one towards whatever the goal is. So for round one, if the goal is eggs in any kind of nest, the automa has a base value of one. So that represents the automa's preserve having one egg in a bowl nest. Each time we add one of these blue cubes to the goal, that represents one more. So that's as if the automa just laid another egg in a bowl nest. So that's the end of the automa's turn. Back to me. My common yellow throat that I was working towards has flown away. So maybe I should have actually drawn cards on that last turn, not got food. So I will rectify that and I will draw cards now. And now you can see how drawing cards works. So I'll put my action cube on the draw card space. 
I will draw one card, and then if I had eggs, I could discard an egg to draw a second card. I don't have any eggs currently, so that doesn't help. I will draw the snowy egret, because I have the food required for it, and it will be quite an easy one to play into this, and you will see it's also a water bird. So if I play another water bird, that water bird will get played to the right of any birds already in that habitat, thus making that action better in the future when I take it. Because as you can see, if I had a bird over here, and I were to play an action cube there, I automatically draw two cards instead of one. I don't have that yet, however. So this slides over, and you'll see now another unique thing about Wingspan, is how each time you take one of these actions, you move your action cube one step over and resolve any brown actions on the birds there. So this one says, when activated, discard one egg from any other birds to gain one food from the supply. I have no other birds and I have no eggs, so that doesn't apply right now. That slides over to there. But in future, that's quite a good way to get more food. That's the end of my turn. My action cube has slid all the way over. It's back to the automa. Flip the card over. And we now have the automa will gather food. And we look at this little chart and we see the leftmost one. Whatever that symbol is, the automa will remove all food from the bird feeder of that type. So right now, there is precisely one rodent. We will remove that rodent. And then there's this little pink square that says activate all pink powers. You see some of these birds have got brown powers, which trigger like I showed you just now. Some of them are white like this, in which case they are one time effects. They happen when you play the bird. Other birds have a pink bar. So instead of brown over here, it's pink. Those trigger during other players turns. So again, this is the automa simulating other players taking turns and giving you an opportunity to use any of those pink powers you've accumulated. But I have no pink powers, so that is the end of the automa's turn. Simply just took some food away. I forgot to replenish the birds here when I'd finished my last turn, so let's do that quickly. And we've got a red-winged blackbird, which again, I know the automa probably wants that. I am tempted to draw cards, but I probably shouldn't because now we saw how this action only works if I've got eggs on other birds. So I should really try play another bird and then lay some eggs on it for that action to be useful. If I wanted to play, say this snowy egret, I have the food. You see it's once an invertebrate or a fish. That's what that little slash means. So I've got the invertebrate I need to play this bird and I could play it there. However, to play it there, I need to put an action cube in the player bird section over in this column, because that's the column I'm wanting to play in. But you'll see it's got a little egg symbol. That means to play a bird in that column, I have to pay one egg. I have no eggs, so I can't do that. So what I should probably do right now is lay some eggs. And I shall put some eggs on my black crowned night heron. I shall grab two eggs from the supply and you will notice that I'm grabbing any old color it doesn't matter the colors are just there for visual interest they have no bearing on the gameplay that was all that slides over to there because I have no brown powers in that section nothing more happens and we proceed to the automa's turn flip a card over and again there goes my chance of getting that red-winged blackbird because the automa will now draw all cards from the central display that match their goal. So there goes the red-winged blackbird, adding two more points and removing another opportunity for me to score points. And that was all. We simply reveal another bird. I am now going to use one of those eggs I laid earlier. I'm going to play, oop, put my little action cube up there. I'm going to play this snowy egret, paying the one invertebrate and one egg. Now when you have to pay an egg into one of these columns, you can pay it from any bird in your preserve. So I take that, discard it, and now I have a snowy egret and a black crowned night heron in my 
water habitat, thereby making me able to draw more cards in the future. That was the end of the turn. Slide that over, go to the Automa. Automa will now draw a face down card from one of the decks and he will remove one cube from the end of round tracker. So it will take this cube away. Whoop. That basically simulates the Automa having spent an egg to place a bird like I just did and drawing another bird which will be worth four points at the end of the game. Let us see now. We have only got three actions left for this round. So chances of me being able to get this hooded warbler and play it into my preserve are pretty slim. So instead what I'm going to do is I'm going to lay eggs again. I'm going to place an action cube in the lay eggs area and this time I'm going to lay eggs on my snowy egret. Put two eggs over there and you'll see I can only have two eggs. So if I were to lay eggs again I would only be able to lay one because these two are both, this one's maxed out and this one's almost maxed out. That slides over and you will see on my next turn why I did that. But first, the Automa has a turn and it is the bird feeder action. So once again, we look at the bird feeder and we match up the symbols. So the Automa would take all of the seed or invertebrate die, which you will see here is that face. That's basically a kind of wild. It's either of those food types, if it's in the bird feeder. In this instance, there are none of those. So we look at the next icon along, which is an invertebrate. There are none of those. The next icon along is seed. Now there are two seed in the bird feeder. So we remove both of those and we would activate any pink powers that I had in my preserve, which I don't, and play it returns to me. So let's see now, I've got this wood stalk that I would quite like to play into my preserve, but I have no food that it needs. In fact, I have no food at all. So in order to play this, I'm going to need to get some more food. Before I can get more food though, I would like to get some more birds and widen my options. So what I'm going to do now is draw cards again. I'm gonna place my action cube over there, and now I will draw two cards. So now I'm going to draw this California quail because that's got a very nice action. You see it says here, when activated, lay one egg on this bird. So every time an action cube lands on that bird, it lays an egg. And eggs are worth points at the end of the game. So that's quite a good one to have. And the other bird I will draw, I'm not wild about either of those, so I'm just gonna draw blind from the top of the deck here. So I will draw a blind bird from the top of the deck and add it to my supply and I got a Eastern Bluebird. You may wonder why I just drew it from the top of the deck instead of replenishing. The reason for that is you only replenish the birds on the display here once you have completely finished your turn. So it only replenishes for the next player. So when it's your turn, you, the only visible birds are the ones that are available here. If you don't like those, you have to draw blind. Now I have drawn my two birds I will move my action cube over onto my snowy egret. And this bird says, when activated, roll all dice not in the bird feeder. If any are fish, gain one fish and cash it on this card. Cashing it means place it on that card and then it's worth one point at the end of the game. So I now take, this is quite a good time for this to happen, all these dice not in the bird feeder, give them a shake, and my egret goes hunting and finds some fish. And even though I rolled two fish, it doesn't matter. I just only get one. So I take one fish from the supply and I place that on my snowy egret. That is now worth one point at the end of the game. Take all of those and set them aside. Move this over. And now this says when activated, discard one egg from any other bird to gain one food from the supply. Now I can discard this one egg from my snowy egret and gain any one food I want from the supply. I'm not limited to what's available in the bird feeder. So let's look 
at these birds that I've got available here. They need invertebrates, they need everything, it would seem. So, I will get an invertebrate. That's a pretty good all-rounder that lots of birds want. My turn is over. Now I replenish this over here. Which is a black turn. Ah, and you'll see it has this little star symbol. That is a wild symbol, so that represents it having any nest. Clearly the black terns are not very picky about the kinds of nests they build. And now it's the Otoma's turn again. Flip over a card. And the Otoma will simply gain one egg. That's a nice easy turn for them. Boop. They've got an egg now. That is worth a point at the end of the game. Back to me and I have some decisions to make. I need more food. Although what I think I'm going to do all of these birds are quite tricky to play. So what I'm going to rather do is I'm going to use the Snowy Egret's ability again by going over here and drawing two more cards because now is the best possible time to play the Snowy Egret action because there are four dice sitting outside of the bird feeder. It's not often that that's the case. There are very often lots more sitting in the bird feeder than out. So let's draw two cards. I will draw this black turn. That's quite a nice one. It's got a wild nest, which counts towards any of the bonuses. It goes in my water habitat, which I can keep building and making better. And it only needs one food in order to play. So let's get that over there. Then let's draw... Again, I'm not terribly interested in these two. They don't have abilities that really help towards any of the goals or things I'm trying to do. So I'm going to just draw blind from the top of the deck. And would you look at that, I got the bird that's on the cover of the box, which is called a scissor-tailed flycatcher. Hmm, so now we know, that is a scissor-tailed flycatcher. It is a bowl nest, well that came up a bit late didn't it? And it needs lots of food, so I'm just going to put that aside into my little hand of cards over here. Let's actually spread these out a bit so they're a bit easier to see what's going on. That is my hand, which would typically be kept secret while playing. Now I've drawn two cards. I'll slide my action cube over and I will trigger my snowy egret. Roll all dice, not in the bird feeder, and hope for a fish. And I got none. Not a very good day for hunting. No fish in the waters. Then we will slide that over. I'll discard this one egg and gain any one food from the supply. I will gain a seed, and I'll start trying to work towards this California quail. So let's see if I can get a seed. Now I just need one more seed and I'll be able to play that. Okay, now we slide that over. That was the end of my final action for round one. We now replenish the birds on the display. Aha, and now there is our first pink powered bird which says once between turns, so if you're playing with multiple players, you can only trigger it off one time. When another player's hunt succeeds, as you see, we've been hunting with this egret, gain one food from the bird feeder. So now, if I have this bird in my habitat here, each time one of these automa cards come up with that little pink square, that action would trigger. It's now the automa's turn. We flip that over. And now the Otomo wants to take food from the bird feeder. However, if there's ever only one type of food in the bird feeder, the Otomo or any player who takes the gain food action can pick up those dice plus any dice not in the bird feeder and roll them, thus replenishing the supply of food in the bird feeder. So now we look at the little tracker here and we see the Otomo wants rodents. So the Otomo will remove all rodents from the bird feeder. It will place one action cube on the end of round tracker. And then we will remove this card, you see here? It says remove after round one. So we will remove that card at the end of round one and that card will not come up again. So now we do the end of round scoring before we proceed into the next round. 
The first thing we do is we check our end of round objectives here. And I would count up any eggs I have in bowl nests, which is zero. So I take one of my action cubes and I place it on the zero space because I had nothing there. So I don't even come in second. The automa looks at however many cubes are on the current round, count as one, plus whatever their base value is on their goal scoring card here, which is one. So that represents the automa having two towards this end goal. So the automa came first. We take their action cube and place it on first space, which is four points for the end of the game. So I didn't do too well in round one, but I did get these pretty high point value cards played into my habitat. That's what these little numbers are next to the feather. So now we proceed to setting up and doing a bit of maintenance before round two. In a multiplayer game, it's as simple as doing the end of round goals, gathering up all your action cubes, which you now only have seven, not eight, because you've put one on the end of round scoring track. So now you only have seven actions. At the end of round two, you'll only have six actions. So the number of actions you have each round diminishes with each round, but your actions get more powerful. So we take those and we set them off to the side. So that would be it for a multiplayer game. In the solo game, we now pick up the Automa deck, all the cards that have been played, plus these ones that haven't. We give them a quick shuffle, set them off to the side. We spin this round marker card. And now every time we flip a card, we'll look at the second row. We also flip over this end of round scoring card. So now we get new values for all of these. So that's the end of round one. We're all set up to play round two, but I think I'm gonna stop playing there, wrap this video for today, because I think that gives you a pretty good sense of how Wingspan plays, what you're doing. You've got a good idea of how you'll be playing birds into habitats, laying eggs on those birds, getting food from the bird feeder, drawing more birds and attracting them to your preserve, and all that while other players at the table are also interacting with the birds, taking them away from there. Or, if there's no other players, you've got the automa simulating what another player would be doing. So with that, I'll say thanks so much for watching, and I hope you enjoyed the show.